All right, so about a week ago, I posted uh, some pictures and a video of my 3D terrain mapping for Cragmall Cavern, or Cragmall Cave, sorry. You got, a bunch of you guys are going to know what this is anyway, just by looking at it. Um, but I got asked a bunch of times, how did I do this? So I thought I'd put together a little YouTube video just showing how I put this whole thing together. Now, I'm going to do it on just a block of terrain because obviously this is already built, but you'll get the idea from that. So also, this is the first video I've ever put together for something like this. This will probably be the last video I put together for something like this, but I just wanted to help out some people that were asking questions. So let's see how I did it. So first, let's go over a list of some of the stuff you're going to need. You're going to need XPS foam board. Right? That's all this is. One inch thick, pink XPS foam board. Don't get it at a craft store like Michael's or something like that because they're going to charge you way more than it needs to be. Go to Home Depot. You can get it in two foot by two foot sheets. You can get it as big as plywood. It's cheap. Get it there. Right? You're going to need some Mod Podge. Black paint, white paint, right? All that Walmart. It's like five bucks, dollar fifty, dollar fifty, something like that. So not very cheap. Dishwasher rinse aid. We'll get into that towards the end, but that's gonna be for your wash after the whole thing is together. Elmer's glue stick, whatever kind of glue stick you want. Hot wire cutter with just the straight piece and the actual bowed piece. A couple of paint brushes, real cheap brushes, don't spend a lot of money on them. Just Walmart, they're like three bucks a pack. Get a small one, get a bigger one. The bigger one you're gonna wreck, but you know, you'll get a couple of uses out of it anyway. Sharpie, whatever color you want, it doesn't really matter. And then whatever you want your terrain to look like. So I printed this out off of Incarnate. I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna know that website, just whatever it is you want. And if you're using this to make a 3D terrain like I did of Cragmall Cavern, just scan in the map right out of the book, blow it up so that it's big enough that you got one inch squares, and then just print that out. And last, you want a template of what you're actually going to use. So that's everything. One more thing that you might want to pick up though, you're going to need a can, some kind of can to mix your wash in. So I chose Yingling Lager, but feel free to choose whatever kind of can you want. So let's get to it. So the first thing you're going to do is take your template, put it on wherever you got some space on your foam board, take your sharpie, trace your edge. Now you'll see that I have a little bit of space between the edges and stuff. You're going to want that because you're going to give this texture as you cut it with your hot wire cutter and if you want to have a sort of beveled edge you're going to want that also so first thing take your hot wire cutter all we're going to do and give yourself plenty of room here is just run your hot wire cutter straight through your xps foam and give yourself plenty of space like i said this stuff is not super expensive by any stretch Cut your whole block out. Don't force your hot wire cutter. Let the heat from the wire cutter do the cutting for you. Real simple. And then your phone can go off to the side. And have all kinds of stringy stuff and yeah, just pull that off. Alright. Your hot wire cutter. You 
want to leave sit for a little bit to burn off the residual, but I'm going to skip that for now and I'll come back and do it later. And you take your wire cutter, plug that in, just leave it heat up a little bit, get rid of some of your strings in the meantime. Now, if you got shaky hands, you know, you're not real smooth with your movements, things like that, sort of like I am, great. Because that's what you want for this. You don't want a perfectly smooth cut. All right? You want to give this a little bit of texture. So don't try and brace this. If you have one of the, the cutting tables, don't use that. Do it freehand. All right? And just go right down the edge. Now, I'm holding this at a very small angle so that it looks like when I'm done, you see that it looks sort of like you know, it's built up on an edge. So just cut out all four of your edges just like that. Don't force it, don't push real hard, just let your wire cutter do the cutting for you. mistake there. A little happy little accident. There we go. Smooth that out a little bit. That's good. And last side. And you're set. Now these pieces you can save for later. They make great, you know, scrap stuff for making rocks and boulders and things like that. So once you're done, turn your hot wire cutter off. Very important. Turn it off. Don't burn your house down. Then you're going to take your Mod Podge, give it a good shake. Now, Mod Podge will dry clear, and when you open it up the first time, it's going to be white. Now, the color doesn't so much matter, but because it's going to dry clear, you want to see that you got the whole thing covered, and you know, depending on how thick you put your paint on, it might give you a little bit of a base coat, but I just dumped some black paint in there, real easy, and then get some on your smaller brush, and you're going to start hitting your edges first. Now, when you're doing your edges, you want to make sure to go with the grain that you just cut. And you don't want to put it on real thick, because you want that grain to stay there to give you texture. That's your key. You definitely want to have some texture with this, because that's going to help define when you put on your dry brush. And you'll see how that goes at the very end, or towards the end. So like I said, nice, smooth, easy strokes. Nice and light. Oh, got a little wire there. We'll get rid of that. Just make sure you got the whole thing covered not real thick. When this dries, the pink is still going to show through. Don't think that you're trying to change the color on this as you're doing it with the Mod Podge. If you do, you're going to put on like 80 coats and go through like three bins of that Mod Podge. And it doesn't really do you any good to do that anyway. So after you get all your sides done, just lay it down. Throw a nice, easy coat over the top. See there's still the ink from the Sharpie there. You're not gonna hide that either, doesn't matter. Just get a coat over the top and then you're done. And once you got your coat over the top, come back up your sides here to pick up any little paint beads that may be lingering there. There's one right there. All right. That way you'll have a smoother 
edge. Make it look nicer when you're all done. All right, so after you got your Mod Podge on there, we're gonna leave this sit for 30 or 40 minutes. If you put it on thicker than that, it's gonna take longer to dry, but don't worry so much about it, all right? You just, you see how that looks? It's still a little shiny and whatnot. I did this maybe 20 minutes ago. You want it to be all the way dry when you're done. So if it's still shiny like that, you're not ready for the next step. But in the meantime, wash your brush, just soap and water, that's all it needs. Wash your hands, once again, just soap and water, that's all you need. And we need to make sure for when we get our wash on that our aluminum can is empty. So this is a good time to empty your aluminum can. All right, so now that your Mod Podge is dry, it's time to throw a first coat of paint over top of it. Now, I'm going to use gray, which obviously is white and black, but the color paint you choose is going to depend on what you want for your terrain above it. So, obviously, I'm going inside of a dungeon, so gray for stone. If you want to make it woodland, maybe you want to use brown for dirt. If you're doing something in the in the coastline, maybe you want to use tan for sand. That's completely up to you, and it really depends on just what you want. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of white, a little bit of black. Just mix them together nice and good. So you get the color you're looking for. Yeah, that looks about right. And once you're done, then get your brush sopped up nice and nice there. You're gonna do the same exact thing that you did with the Mod Podge. Nice light coat, top to bottom, right along your grain line there. Nice and thin, does not have to be thick. Does not have to be thick at all. Because you wanna keep that grain in there for your texture. Now I know it's very difficult to see it right now on the video, but once we put the uh, the next coat on here, you're gonna see it. Like you're gonna see it, it'll stand out to you very, very well. So, One nice coat over top of the entire thing. Okay. All right, once you're done with that, we can do the top. Now, because you're putting down a piece of paper on top of this, you don't need to paint the whole top, obviously. Just the edges that's going to be exposed by the paper. Now, at this point, your Sharpie lines, that you're going to want to make sure get gone this will essentially be your last chance to get rid of that. So, we got a good coat over the top and the sides. Now, once again, same thing as when you're putting your Mod Podge on. You want to go around the edges one more time and bring that paint up just in case you get any kind of bubbles or you know paint buildup or whatnot so that's the that's the end of that step whatever color you're painting it that's it so once again at the end of that step you're going to make sure that your brush gets clean once again just soap and water to clean your brush clean your hands 
once again, just soap and water to clean your hands and make sure your can is empty. Now, if your first can didn't get emptied all the way or it got emptied, but you're not sure it's emptied, get another can and then empty that one because this is going to take 15 or 20 minutes to dry before we can put our next coat on. So make sure you finish up with an empty can. All right, once your paint is dry, we're gonna put on a dry brush coat to bring out all of the textures that I was talking about earlier, okay? So for me, I'm gonna use white for my dry brush coat because I'm doing stone, white brings out the stone better. If you're doing woodland, maybe you wanna do a dry brush coat in green over top of your brown if you're doing desert, maybe you want to do a light tan or a lighter brown over top of whatever you're doing. It's just going to depend on your terrain and what you want. So, got a little bit of white paint on my paper towel. You're going to load your brush up a little bit. Just the tip. You don't need the whole kit and caboodle. All right. Once you've got some paint on there, you're going to start brushing it out. Just get the, as much of that paint out of your brush as you can. And you want to keep doing that till you get to the point where when you're brushing it over your paper towel or whatever you're using for your palette, it doesn't look like anything else is showing up. And then that should be good right there. So take your heavy brush. This is the one you're going to mess up anyway. And just lightly start going over top of your edges right? now you can do this as much as you want or as little as you want until you feel like you know you've got your edges or your highlights set so once again this is a, a lot of personal preference and how much you want to put over top of this it doesn't take long it doesn't take much effort at all just Hit it just a little bit until you've got all four sides done. You want to do the top, knock yourself out. You can do the top too. It really doesn't matter. Right? You're not going to see much of the top anyway, except for a little bit on the edge. So like I said, if you want to, go ahead but that's what's going to bring out your textures, your highlights, your whole mind. I mean, all of the, the good looking stuff of this. All right. That's what makes this whole setup really, really cool. So that's the basics of it. So we got one more step. We're going to put a wash on it. The wash is going to sort of blend everything together and make it really pop. So once again, we only got about five minutes or so to wait here till this dries all the way. So clean your brush, clean your hands if you need to. And this is your very last chance, very last chance to have an empty can. So if you haven't gotten an empty can yet, now is the time to get an empty can. All right, so here we are, the very last step. Well, second to last, I guess. So, empty can. Cut the top off of it. Fill it up with water a little bit. Take your dishwasher rinse aid and just dump some of it right in there. All right. This is going to be your flow agent. This is going to be what helps you get all of this blended together. Take whatever color paint you're going to use for your wash. I'm using black. Just dump a little bit in there. You don't got to have a whole lot. Just, a, just enough. Then just mix it all together. So you got some kind of nice dark looking
Yeah. Now, before anybody asks, I'm using a nail to mix this up. Why am I using a nail? Because the iron in the nail mix... I'm just kidding. Because that's what was available. It doesn't matter. Just mix the thing up. Throw it off to the side, you're done. Take your regular paintbrush, the one that you didn't mix up all over the place, just dunk it in there and start rinsing it over the top. Now, you're going to make a mess. There's no getting around it. You're going to make a mess. So, if you're living with your folks, don't do this on your mom's nice kitchen table. If you're living on your own, don't do it on your nice kitchen table. You know, do it in a workshop or outside or somewhere where you don't care if crap's going to get everywhere. Because it's going to get everywhere. Right? If it's not coming out dark enough for you, if it's not blending in well enough for you, mix it again. Put some darker paint in there, and there you go. But... This will make the white pop. This will make the dark pop. It'll blend everything together just a little bit. I think I'm going to go a little darker on this one. Let's hit that one more time. Just with a little, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's much nicer. There we go. That's more what I was looking for. Now, like I said before, what color paints you use is completely up to you. And it is. If you're doing... You know, some kind of woodland landscape. Maybe you want to use brown for your wash. Maybe you want to use green for your wash. If you're doing an Arctic landscape, you know, maybe you did this whole thing in white and a light blue and you want to use a blue for your wash to, you know, bring out the ice for the ice queen that your characters are fighting or whatever. It's completely up to you and what you're choosing for your landscape. If you're doing some kind of you know, something in the Fey world, maybe you want to mix some glitter in with that somewhere to make it sparkle a little bit. It just depends on what you want to do with your landscape. So that's pretty much it. The only thing that you need to do after that, you're going to take your terrain piece, you're going to take your glue stick, just dab it on up and stick it on there. So once this dries, I figure everybody can figure out how to glue that or terrain piece on top of that. So we'll come back one more time, take a look at the finished product and see how it looks. And we'll wrap it up. All right, so we got our terrain piece glued on there. Everything's dry and this is it. This is what it looks like when it's done. Well, that's a little wet there still, but okay. But that's it. That's what it looks like when it's done. So, if you're looking for more inspiration or more ideas on this kind of stuff, you know, feel free to comment, feel free to hit the like, hit, feel free to hit the subscribe button, but I would seriously doubt that I'm going to have another one of these after that, but hey, you never know. Um, there's other people out there that are much better at this than I am. Uh, Black Magic Craft is a really good YouTube to follow. Uh, he's much more in depth than I am. Uh, he doesn't use the terrain overlay like I do. He just crafts it all right out of the XPS. So... A lot of it is just what you feel comfortable with and what you like doing. All right. Well, happy gaming to everybody. Happy crafting. I hope everybody got something out of this. You guys have a good night.